So, uh, we have our guest speaker here. And, you know, we're very fortunate here at Northern Mary Community College that we get speakers come in from all over the place to come talk to students. But I like to think we have leaders in our area that can, you know, say some good things to students. So, you might be wondering, how do I know this heavy hitter Frank, right? Well, I'll tell you, I've known Frank since I was younger than you guys. And the way I met him was through my grandmother. My grandmother. Yeah. This lovely lady right here. Now, she would be 108 years old today. But um, yeah, I never met my grandfather because she, he died a couple years before I was born. Uh, and my grandma lived to four days short of 94. And she went on one date outing with another gentleman after she was widowed. And she said, no one can be as fun as George. So she didn't have to go any more dates. And she ended up, like I say, she was widowed longer than she was married. And so she needed something to fill her life. And so she got connected with Frank and the Des Moines Worker House. And one of the ways she did that is, this was one of her cease and desist orders that we probably spayed at her funeral. Uh, and what a cease and desist order, and notice they spelled trespassing incorrectly. I thought that was interesting. Uh, one of the, you know, if you trespass, they say, okay, don't do that. And then you don't do it for a while and then you're okay. But if you keep coming back, then eventually they say, hey, you gotta go to jail for a while. Um, so anyhow, my grandmother, at her funeral, four days short of 94, uh, there were two unique things about this funeral. One, uh, she, you know, usually when you're 94 years young, most, all, all, of, her all of her sisters and her brother had, had left us. And you, you, you don't have a whole lot of friends, your friends and family aren't around as much. But there were 300 people at this funeral because she stayed around with young people. The other unique thing was there were four speeches. One was from a, uh, as a Islamic, uh, was an Islamic long speech. One was a Judaic Jewish speech, and one was a Catholic speech. Not because my grandmother was confused, she was a devout Catholic, but that was just what she wanted. And the third, or the fourth was from Frank. And most of us were pretty much fine. We were like, you know, she lived the life she wanted, she lived a good long life, but we lost him when Frank got up there because he started going on about Catholic heresies like female priests and birth control and all those sort of things. And that's when we kind of lost it. So, and there's Corey. All right. <laughs> come on, students. Meet my friend. Freddie, come on. You, you missed my introduction. No, dang it. Do it again. I'll send you the video, you guys, you guys, okay. but anyway, let's make room for the, um, I was just saying, we'll wait, we'll hold on for a minute here, while we get another half of an audience, there's plenty of spots. You gonna make Corey give a speech now too? Since yeah, Corey, do you want, I, I, you just missed my, oh, how I know Frank's story. So I don't know if I know Frank longer. Well, yeah. well, I know Frank. No, no, no. I know his grand oh, his grandmother. Yeah. I didn't mean, what, we did our Pharisees grand. and Scribes Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Greg. Yes. All right. Take a seat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Um, I was just so I, I shared how I know Frank. Uh, Corey, do you want to share how you know our guest speaker here? Um. Yeah. You know what? I do. So. Um, my, well, my closest friend, who my son is named after, who was murdered, um, 20, 19 years ago now, um, he introduced me to Sonny, I knew he was Sonny, Frank, um, God, it's been 30 years, um, and I found out about the Catholic Worker House and Dorothy Day and all the work that Frank's doing, so now about quarterly, Ray, Blaze, and I, a friend of mine and I, uh, drop off some meat and get to help out uh, where we can. Um, it's a mission unlike any other. I can't tell you how important this work is. And uh, man, those Jesuits can teach. So I got nothing else. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, here comes Frank. He's gonna share uh, his worldview, 
Consider this for the speech students. This is an example for persuasive speech, and Corey, this is, I guess, a field trip. Well, the guy that's been arrested as many times as Frank, we want to hear from. Where my criminal law does. Wonderful. <laughs> Guys, you can hear me now, because I'm, yes. I'm hooked up. Thanks, uh, Corey, great, great to see you again. Eric, his grandmother was extraordinary. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I thought I would just start this thing by what uh, I wrote about myself uh, and then give you a key point of reference about uh, the source uh, of my power, whatever that means. Uh, Frank Cordero is a former Catholic priest and the co-founder of the Des Moines Catholic Worker Community in 1976. The Des Moines Catholic Worker is an ecumenical, interfaith, Nonviolent anarchist Catholic worker community living in voluntary poverty, intentional community, serving the poor and the needy. Cordero has served six years of prison time for nonviolent civil disobedience over the years, which includes eight separate, separate six month sentences for crossing the line at Albany Air Force Base over a 30 year span. Guy doesn't give up. Cordero participated in the May 1998 Gods of Metal Plowshares Witness, where he and four others hammered on a B-52 bomber at Andrews Air Force Base. Cordero believes any fair reading of the New Testament would see Jesus and his followers were not pro-rich. They were not pro-war. And they were not pro-Roman Empire. Oh my. That loving your enemy means you listen to this. <laughs> You can't kill him. Oh my. And that doing the works of mercy, that is, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, housing the homeless is what following Jesus is all about. Period. Huh. Now, I want you to know that the way I see following Jesus and the way that vast majority of Christians in this country, Catholic, Methodist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Evangelical, New Whatever, is different. Near as I can tell. And uh, I, it's a subtle difference, uh, but it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's one worth pointing to because it'll affect every answer I give to the questions you all gave me. So, uh, and it's a, and I have this kind of learning tool that uh, I use to try to explain it. Because I claim to be a person of the word. Have been since I was 19. Had a religious experience, a personal experience with the gospels and Jesus, and I was doing it as a Catholic, which was not done in the 70s very often. I was an evangelical Catholic. We called us ourselves charismatics, and we took the book seriously. And I'm not a real smart kid, so I just read it plain and simple. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's really the New Testament. That's why they call it new. You get into the new, you get to the root of it. Yeah, and, uh, and I got hooked. And I have not let go of the book since. However, I have changed. I have grown, I've got lots of experiences, I've made choices, I really want to follow this guy, Jesus. And I've come to understand that it's really critical how you look at the book. The first step you take is the most important step. By that, let me explain. Here, I'm gonna put before you a page with black dots and white dots in an arranged way 
And I'm going to tell you that you're looking at a duck. Can you guys see the duck on this page? All right. So some people pick up the boy Bible, the New Testament, and say, you're looking at a duck. And if you're looking for a duck, the Bible will show you a duck. A duck. Okay, let me, let me do something else here. Same piece of paper, same dots, but now you see them in a different perspective, from a different place. And I'm telling you, at this point, I'm looking at a rabbit. You all see a rabbit? Ears, much one same. Yeah. So if I were to tell you that when you read the Bible, you're seeing a rabbit, you're going to see a rabbit. Okay. The rabbit, duck in my world, is that I'm at heart a human literaturist. If you're a person who believes in the book, you believe in words and sentences that put together stories, a book that was written in the stream of human literature. Uh, so, <laughs> if you're in the stream of human literature, you call yourself a person of the New Testament, you need to find yourself in that stream of literature when the book was written, first and second century. Find out everything you can on human literature in the first and second century, and you will be able to figure out what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were all about. And I've come to understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is all about discipleship. Who wants to follow this radical, new Jew, dead Jew, on a tree from the first century, who had a completely different understanding of his, Jesus' relationship with God, that ultimately changed what it meant to be Jewish. The new Jew, Jesus. I mean, that's the book. Calls it the New Testament. Jesus didn't claim to be anything but what the apostles and the people who wrote about him said. We are the heirs of Abraham. The new Jew perspective. That's really hard for us to hear that maybe Jesus was Jewish. And he was serious about Jewish. And his followers were serious about being Jewish. However, today... In the current climate we live in, in the world we live in, we might want to pay attention to this because what's going on in the Middle East back in the lands where Jesus lived right now? A war? It's in the description. A war against the Palestinians from the Israelis. I would call it more like a slave rebellion by the Palestinians in a brutal genocidal put down by the uh, Israelis. I mean, any fair description of the kill ratio, whatever. That's going on right now. Very important stuff. And people would ask me, what's the problem in the Middle East? The problem in the Middle East is bad faith. And the worst people who are of uh, faith right now in the Middle East are the Israelis who are Jewish. But there are worse Jews than them. American Christians. <laughs> We're the ones that prop this whole thing up. This is where I come from, friends. I'm 73 years old. I've lived most of my life. I come from the generation called baby boomers. That's right. That's right. And I, I'm, I, there's no one more, more proud of than my father. An Italian American who went and fought in World War II, got wounded came back here, started a family, and wanted to become a teacher and a coach, and he went to Dowling and he'd teach and he coach. There's no one I love more than my dad, a Marine, wounded. We didn't talk much about war. He died before I could even get to, uh, he was smart enough to even ask the question. Good man. But I, I'm the inheritance of World War II. Our generation is the benefactors of World War II. And what did we do with that? We build on the lie of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we became 
the single most powerful empire in the world. Come on, that's just that's post World War II history. And the Russians are competing with us, and the Chinese are competing with us, and lots of other people are competing with us. But if you if you just stop to think, if everybody's competing with us, that's that should tell you that we're we're the we're we're the top dog. I remember when we were when I was learning about the arms race. And, and, and uh, uh, there was lots of good places. I thought Russians are going to get ahead of us. And, and, and they didn't know why they said they were because they were always stealing our ideas. Look, at if you're in a race and the group that's close to second to you has to steal your ideas to win the race, you're clearly in the lead. Ooh, we are the ultimate superpower of the world, have been since World War II. And I'm a person, I'm a modern person. I don't need a second century Jesus to tell me this. Something's really wrong. You guys get it too. Just in Iowa, what I'm talking about. In my lifetime, since World War II, half of the soil God gave us to work with, to help us grow food for the rest of whatever, Half of that soil has been pissed down the rivers. Ain't no lie. 